I've got to make this fast because I don't really have much battery, but just wanted to pop in here and let you know what I'm doing this evening. I am listening to the audio for The Worst Duke in London and making a little, uh, you actually can't see. I made my first annotations, but they're in this like light pink um, tabs at the moment. So uh, there are some darker ones that'll show up later, but listening to this, but then I'm going to switch over to my Kindle in a little while and read Off the Hook by Julia Olivia. This is a like Peter Pan and Wendy retelling, except she's already dated and broken up with Peter Pan and is now uh, about to be the nanny for his brother who has kind of seemed to have a thing for her, but he's like the broody quiet one and he's a single guardian to his godson. So her name is literally on the nose. It's Wendy Darling, but their last name is not Pan, I don't think, for the for the guys. I don't know. I was, like, hesitant to start this. This book has come up um, for me, uh, recommended from Kindle Unlimited multiple times, but I'm not really into fairy tale retellings like that. But there has been some... Discourse is a strong word for what it is, but... There are lots of like rage bait tweet tweets uh, on threads and the most recent one has been about whether or not authors should continue to use the pet name Baby. And so what the authors have done is replied with just like the scenarios in which it's used, especially when you're least expecting it. And I have been reading some of the wrecks that have come from that. And this is one of them. And so far I'm enjoying the vibe. I'm only like 55 pages in, so I don't really have much to tell you at this point. Uh, the, uh, MMC West has his godson with him at the pier where he works. He, I don't know what he does. He does some sort of like fishing related thing. I don't think he's actually a fisherman because Wendy makes some comments about how bulky he is and like how he like throws barrels around all day. So I don't know. I don't know. But I like his vibe. You can tell he's got some, like, previous damage from his last relationship. He was with this woman when his best friend and his that and his best friend's wife passed away, which led to him taking in Sam, his godson. And he relied on his family a ton when that happened, which makes sense. And she used to give him so much shit for using his family too much, in her opinion, and that he was essentially not shirking his responsibility, but maybe leaning on them too much. So I don't know. He's got some hangups around that. And he was very hesitant to ask Wendy to be the, the nanny he needs. His sister quit like two days before his son got out of school, which was like not helpful at all. And it wasn't like in a flighty way. It was just like a thing that just something happened and whatever. But he's hesitant because he he's so enamored with her. But, like, no one really knows it. And he comes off as, like, the gruff one. And he rarely shows up for, like, family dinners and things. And he's just shown up for family dinner. And I don't know. I'm interested in why he's so reclusive. Other than, like, personality-wise. Like, he seems to really enjoy it just being him and Sam. And they're off in their fixer-upper cottage. You know, it's in town, but it's outside of town. So it's, like, not super close to the rest of the family. And I think it has to do with some of his hangups on his past relationship. But that's what I'm doing this evening. I don't know if I will time lapse anything because, like I said, the battery on this is about to go. But I wanted to film a clip just to get into the rhythm of it for this weekly vlog because I didn't do anything yesterday filming wise and I really didn't read. I had a big project at work that's technically not done, but like the big parts of it are done. And that happened today. And so now I'm just kind of doing like residual cleanup of things and making sure things are in order. But it just means that I have brain space again and I can read. And that's all I want to do. So that's how I'm going to spend my evening. It's only 8 o'clock. So I have a solid 2-3 hours ahead of me before I conk out <laughs> for, for bed. So yeah, that's all I've got. Happy reading. Hopefully. Hopefully I'll enjoy all of this. I'm really liking the vibes of this so far. I really like the Duke. Um, who's our MMC in this. This is a Taming of the Shrew retelling. And I can already tell that their love story is going to be so, so good. I loved the first two books in the series. So um, I'm excited to keep going. I just really like how he is already so enamored with F.E.R. FMC. And she kind of can't stand him, which is my favorite. So we're having a good time. It's a good time. 
Hi, happy Thursday. It's been a few days since I've given you guys an update, but I'm reading Off the Hook by Julia Olivia right now, and I'm having the best time. I was a little skeptical in the beginning, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna give it 100 pages, and I really love the way Wendy developed her relationship with Sam, who's the kid she's nannying, but the way she makes Jasper, I shouldn't say she makes him open up, but like she makes such a comfortable space for him to open up, and I absolutely love the fact that he validates her through and through the whole book. It's just, it's so sweet. But also that man has a mouth on him. And I mean that all sorts of ways because there are moments where he will just say the most like devastatingly beautiful thing to her. And then the next moment he's like, but also like, those cute little ribbons you wear, we're gonna tie your hands together and then you're gonna sit on my face. And she's like, yes please. <laughs> it's the perfect mix of watching a couple get to know each other and smut. Like there's not too much. I have liked that there's been a mix of fade to black and on page so it doesn't feel like you're just being bombarded the whole time. I think that's really important. This book is long. It says I'm 69% of the way through, haha. <laughs> And I'm on page 288. So this has to be a 400 to 425 page book. So something's about to happen. I can tell. Like, they're happy. They're horny. They're having a good time. So that joy has got to be disrupted somewhere. And because the MMC is the brother of her ex-fiance, Peter, clearly there's going to be something that goes on there. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I'm having a great time. I love how vulnerable they are with each other. I love how open and honest they are with each other. I'm I'm having a great time. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. I've been listening to Deja Brew by Celestine Martin as I have been like working, like just had that on in the background. It's been the perfect workday audiobook. I think I'm like 30% into that and I'm having a really, really good time with that as well. I have put down The Worst Duke in London because I really want to annotate that as I'm reading it and I just haven't had the energy to annotate post work so that'll probably be a weekend book for me but I am liking where that's going but back to Deja Brew I don't even think I told you about that one this is the third book in I do not know what the name of the series is but the first book was Witchful Thinking and then the second one was kissing something I can't remember the title but I saw DNF witchful thinking at like 40% last year because it felt like there was a lot of showing and not a lot of telling and I want to reread it I think that was more so me just not being in the mood for like a cozy witchy romance vibe but I am very much in the mood for that this year I think it also helps that, I don't know, this being the third book in the series, I skipped, I clearly skipped the first two because I just needed to see if it got better and it has gotten better. So I think part of this is that the world is very established in this book and we're just diving right into the active plot versus in the last one, it felt like she was doing a lot of work to explain the town to us and what the dynamics were like and we just didn't need that this time and honestly i didn't need it the first time as someone who didn't read you know a ton of the first book didn't read the second one at all i'm really liking where this is going so i will go back and read those i guess i'm saying all this to say i'm liking where she's landing so i think i'm going to go back and read the other two if for nothing else than to get to know the, the rest of the family so i don't know that's what's happening i'm having a good time i'm gonna keep reading off the hook there's a very good chance I finish this tonight, honestly, because I'm just having such a good time. I'm eating my way through it. I've got sports going on in the background, excellent background reading noise. And it's just a good way to wind down the week. Tomorrow's Friday. I cannot wait. I'm starting to feel cramps coming on. I know my period's going to start. And all I want to do this weekend is be one with the couch. And so I think that's what's going to happen. It'll be a lot, a lot of reading this weekend. I finished it. Giving it four stars. Great time. Great, great, great time. Um, I thought the third act conflict went exactly how I thought it was going to go. I just wish they had handled it together, but I understand why they didn't. It all made sense. You could see it coming from a mile away. And 
I guess the only thing that like bothered me about it was that it felt prolonged. I don't think it actually was. It was like a week, but in the way this is written and how many pages this book is, it felt like forever. I was very glad to see Wendy lay into Peter because that girl is... I don't know if she's not mean because it, it wasn't a mean thing, but it was a hard, difficult conversation. But 100% necessary. And I'm glad it happened because, wow, that man annoys the shit out of me. I kind of can't stand him, but I feel like he's going to have a redemption arc later in the series, so we'll see. I just found out that book two follows Cassidy, who's the third brother, and I really like him, and I'm debating whether or not to just start that book right now, or if I should just take a little break, go to sleep, and then start something new tomorrow, which would be the responsible thing to do, because it's 9.40, and I have to work tomorrow, so... I had a good time. It was great. Jasper got better at expressing his feelings, which is we love growth. We love some maturity. We love those things. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. I'm giving it four stars because something just felt like it was missing and I don't really know what that was. I think it's the dialogue. There were a lot of good and sweet moments, but some of it just felt off. I don't know how to describe it. Like, it felt like I just remember reading going, like, I would never say this. And I don't need that in a book, but there's something about recognizing, I don't know, saying recognizing common language sounds so weird, but I think you come to expect certain things in a contemporary romance, specifically in conversation, and just like the flow of it that just wasn't there or was. Like, some of the word choice just felt weird. But it wasn't enough for me to go, like, that doesn't make any sense. Because it would make sense. It just felt off. But... <sighs> and there's my sign to go to bed. So I will update you tomorrow when work is over and I have nothing but the weekend to look forward to. Okay, I gotta make this quick because I did not turn my car on, which means there's no air conditioning in this moment and it's steamy in this car. But I couldn't bring myself to film inside of Barnes & Noble. It was just so busy and I just didn't feel comfortable. But here's what I got. So I had a $10 credit on my card, so I let myself, on my like membership. And so I let myself get a third book because I intentionally went in there looking for Deja Brew, which I found. And then... There's another book that's been on my TBR that I actually mentioned in last week's video that uh, was one of the few books I didn't have for that Booktubers Recommends video that I'm doing where I'm actually going to read the books from them. So I picked up The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mundana. Um, buy one, get one half off. And I was searching for something else. I didn't really see anything I wanted on the tables nearby it. I take that back. I saw Emily Wilde's there, but I don't know if I'm going to like that book. And I caught it on a Kindle sale and got it for like $2.99. So I was like, I'm not going to buy the paperback unless I read it and love it. But this, I just know I'm going to like. And so I just picked it up. Then I got for my other half off book, Deep as the Red Sea by Rita Chang Epic. I have seen this cover so many times but have never read the synopsis and then I read it and I was like, oh, sold immediately. So this woman, Czech, is a Portuguese sailor and she, um, or no, she sees a Portuguese sailor slay her husband and he was a feared pirate and she knows she has to act swiftly or she'll die. And so instead of mourning, she decides to figure out a plan and she immediately marries her husband's second in command with the promise to bear him a son as an heir to like secure her place and her her power and it says as Shek vies for control over the army she knows she was born to lead larger threats loom the chinese emperor has charged a brutal crafty nobleman with ridding the south china sea of pirates and the europeans tired of losing ships men and money to Shek's alliance 
have new plans for the area. Even worse, Shek's cutthroat retributions create problems all their own. As Shek navigates new motherhood and the crisis of leadership, she must decide how long she is willing to fight and what price or risk losing her fleet, her new family, and even her life. I can't wait to read this. I read The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi earlier this year and I absolutely loved it. And more Lady Pirates, please. More Lady Pirates, pirates especially by authors of color because the perspective that happens with that is just so different. And I shouldn't say it's so different. It is, but it's it's richer, I think is what I was trying to get at. I find that the storytelling is a bit richer, so I'm excited to read this. And then, of course, Deja Bru by Celestine Martin. I also was going to look for Kiss and Spell and um, Witchful Thinking. I have two, I have art copies of both of those on my shelf right now. I actually might have a physical finished copy of Wishful Thinking now that I say that but I didn't see either of those books in here I just saw these two and or this one and I, in fact I think I grabbed the last copy at least the last display copy maybe they had more in the back but I didn't see Celestine Martin's books anywhere else in the in the store it was just on the fall romance books table so I grabbed it so that's all I've got for you right now I took a Benadryl before I left home and I'm not tired at all and uh, my nose is cleared up and I feel better which is incredible I also love that for me so I am going to pick something up for lunch on my way home and then when I get home I'm gonna watch some football eat that lunch and build a grocery order because my grocery my refrigerator is bare it's barren it is sad looking there's nothing in there but I just don't have it in me right now to brave a grocery store at 11.30 a.m. Because in my area, that may as well be 4 p.m. Like, if the grocery store parking lots, even coming up to Barnes & Noble as I pass them, were crazy. So, I know they're going to be even worse now. So, yeah, I'm going to enjoy this beautiful sunny weather as I drive home. I'm going to pop up in this sunroof and just kind of vibe. So, I will talk to you guys in another clip soon. Welcome to a Sunday car update. I do have my seatbelt on, but I am not moving. I just picked up some lunch inside of Jersey Mike's because a sandwich and some chips sounded great. So that's what we're doing for lunch today. I have the overwhelming urge to just like not do or read anything again, which is very annoying, but I have, I think a little less than a hundred pages of Deja Bru left. So I am gonna finish that today. And then I'm gonna lean into me not wanting to read. I'm just gonna let that happen for a little bit in hopes that it's just a today thing and not a weeks long thing like it's felt like it would be for the last little bit because I have books that I'm excited about I think it's my allergies are bothering me a lot and so all I really want to do is lay down and I think just the drowsiness of that is really where this is coming from I also feel like my apartment is a mess my fridge is empty but I am rectifying that I have a pickup order later today for groceries yeah I don't know. I, my my life feels a little messy right now, even though like nothing in particular has happened to cause that. I think it's the culmination of me letting my fridge get to basically empty, which for me as someone who grew up um, with some food insecurity brings lots of insecurity to me. And even though I can't afford to go through and, and do a pickup order for groceries when I need to, for whatever reason, I was putting it off earlier this week. And I think it was just because I am trying my damnedest to not waste food and earlier this week my work schedule was so all over the place that I was worried that I was gonna like order a bunch of groceries but like not have time to prep the stuff that tends to spoil quickly and so then I just kept putting it off and if you were to look in my fridge now you're like you you couldn't make a meal out of any of this really although I did take some chicken out of the freezer so that's not entirely true it's just not useful yet <laughs> um that's a long way to say that I don't know I just need to get my home in order so that I feel in order and that's what we're gonna do today I'm leaning into that I don't know how much of that I will show you um but I just got an alert that my target pickup order is ready too so I'm gonna go scurry over there and get that because that has allergy medicine in it and I desperately need that right now and yeah we're just gonna take it moment by moment today see how things go
I wish I could adequately describe how excited I am for the cold front that is hitting Texas right this moment. It is 76 degrees right now, but when I wake up in the morning, it will be a cool 49 degrees and I am so freaking excited. I'm not excited for the inevitable like sneezing and coughing I'm going to have, but I already have soup ready for lunch tomorrow. I bought a chicken pot pie, like little mini serving from H-E-B for my dinner tomorrow. Like I, your bitch is gonna be cozy, okay? She's gonna be cozy. She's gonna be sitting on the couch with the Kindle, ready to go. Might leave the back door open to let some cool air inside. I debated going to bed with my windows open tonight, but I just know that's a recipe for me getting sick, so I won't be doing that. But I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. So I'm in the mood right now for an unhinged mafia man, which does not fit anything on my TBR currently. However, we're going to indulge because I've learned that if I ignore those mood reader urges, a reading slump will appear and I don't need that right now. I'm looking at the stack of books that I made for the booktubers recommend challenge that I, I challenge isn't the right word. Maybe it is. A little video series I want to start and I really want to read one of those, but I fear if I don't read this first, I will not get to those. So what we have on the docket, because I haven't downloaded it to my Kindle yet, is Vicious Hearts by Jagger Cole. I read Deviant Hearts back in 2023, this says. That doesn't feel right. Did I really read it that long ago? That's wild. I feel like I read something by him much more recently. Oh, I did. I'm a silly goose. I read Corrupted Heart recently in May. May, 20th, May 23rd, 2024 is when this came out. I read it literally the day it came out. Didn't even realize it. And I loved it. I had such a good time. I'm now realizing this is not what I want, actually. Damn. Well, hold up. What is this release schedule? Jacker, are you okay? That book came out in May. Then he released another one in July. Okay, I think we're reading that one. I think that's what's gonna happen because I read the first one and I didn't love it. And I was not going to read that fourth one that came out, but I think an Instagram reel got me and I loved it. So I read that and had a good time. I think I'm gonna skip Vicious Hearts for now. And I'm instead going to read, what is this called? Monstrous Urges? Actually, maybe I will. Maybe I'll read the synopsis and then go from there. I should do. I should decide based on that. Play lethal games with the wrong stranger. Wait, wait. I love that. Masked man from the app. Wait, is that not the same premise as the one that came out like right before it? Because that sounds like the book before, unless. I have noticed that Goodreads has had this problem where they accidentally copy and paste the um, same, oh no, okay, different, slightly different synopsis, but they both are on the same app. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, I, thank goodness I track my reading. Hmm, I don't know which one's gonna happen, but I'll figure it out. I'll pop back on and tell you and we'll go from there. Hi, how's it going? It is Wednesday. I just got back from walking my dog after work. Oof, my nose is so sensitive right now. The cold front came in. It's like 70 degrees outside right now. So you're like, cold front? What cold front? But it was 49 when I walked Frankie this morning. So there was definitely a cold front. So I'm a silly goose and in texting my friend Nicole last night about which of the Jagger Cole Mafia romances I should read, I realized that I was talking about two different series and didn't even realize it. I was telling her, I was like, man, I was like, I really liked book four and I wasn't expecting like the masked man aspect and that's the first time I've really read one. She's like, masked man? There's no masked man in book four. Then I realized she was talking about the Dark Heart series and I was talking about 
Venomous Gods, that's what I was talking about. I was talking about Venomous Gods because I unintentionally read book four of that earlier this summer, not realizing that, number one, that it was book four, number two, that it was a different series. So I told her I would go back and give Dark Hearts another try because I had an okay time with the first book. And you know what? The same thing happened with the second book. So I'm wondering if maybe I should abandon the series and then go back over to the Venomous Gods one because I just have liked that one better so far. But with Vicious Hearts, I will say it's com it was compulsively readable. I started that book last night. And it's 5.45 p.m. and I'm, I finished it already. Like, I'm done with this book. So it was definitely compulsively readable. I think where I really struggled was me not recognizing soon enough that this just wasn't the book I was in the mood for. I don't think there was really anything wrong with this as, dark, as far as dark romance goes. I liked that Killian was on the darker side for... I say on the darker side... Him as person, not just personality wise, but like his own urges and rules and things, I would say we're on the darker side to what I typically read. I know there's much darker out there, but like this man, in order to quell his need to just do so much damage, was um, regularly seeking out some vigilante justice, if you will, which you know, more power to you. The people he was taking out deserved it. But he, in general, even once he gets to know Una, who's the, the FMC in this book, he's soft for her, but he's still not soft. And I realized I was looking for something a little bit softer. I don't even mind the dark parts. And like, I could have taken a left, whether it was dark or morally gray. I think what I was looking for, though, was a... The man who was shocked by the amount of romance coming out of him towards the FMC. And that, I did not get that in this book. And honestly, if I had been paying a bit more attention in the beginning, I would have clocked that immediately. And I just, for whatever reason, didn't. So I did not have the greatest time with this one. I also, even if there's a lack of, like, acts of service or gifts or whatever as far as romance go, because I feel like those are the two things that tend to show up a lot, specifically in dark romance... I think I was just looking for, I think I was looking for Jagger Cole to show us that these two like each other in non-sexual scenes. Like, it would happen. Like, there were moments where, especially because of the type of guy Killian was, where one of the brothers from the, I can't remember their names now, the, the Greek family he married off his niece into in the first book. Like, Hades in particular really did not like Una. And for good reason, he definitely had to save Killian in the beginning because she she stabby stabbed him real good. So it's like his coldness towards her initially makes sense, but Killian's also a mob boss, and you just don't disrespect him, and by extension of him, his his girl. And Hades kept doing that in a way, and so Killian would be like, "So you're gonna change your tune, or I'm going to chop you to pieces." And so there was that, but I was looking for more like. I don't know what I was looking for, if I'm being honest. I'm trying to articulate it, and I just can't in this moment. I'm thinking back to some other ones that I've read where it's a marriage of convenience is the wrong word. Convenient for him, prison for her. <laughs> um, stories like that where in an effort to make the transition to her basically being a prison in this penthouse, the guy would, I don't know, have fresh flowers delivered every week or something, or... He'd be like, oh, I remember you mentioning you liked getting sushi with your friends. And, like, I know that the fact that you can't leave sucks. He would have hundreds of dollars of sushi delivered to the apartment or something. Or we just, like, do something that she had, like, in the past mentioned. But I also think part of the reason this doesn't exist in this book is because Una has such a dark past herself that we spend so much time dealing with that in her head. And so she's not the normal like mafia princess FMC and she's a badass. And I loved that she was a badass, but I also just like, I was in the mood for something a little softer. Again, not necessarily less dark. I was just in the mood for something softer when we get those private, we're in, we're alone in the apartment kind of uh, moments. So I'm gonna give this, I think three and a half stars. It was fine. It was, it was fine. I also have to remind myself that Jagger Cole's a man, and 
that's not an indictment. That just means I'm going to get a specific kind of book. And I got that book. So in my attempts to seek out the soft, I have picked up The Worst Duke in London again. I'm listening to the audio, which is why my tabs just so abruptly stopped. I don't even think you can see those because these are pretty translucent. The audio is so good, y'all. I think Effie might be my favorite FMC from this series. So I don't know if I told you about this, but it's a Taming of the Shrew retelling, kind of. But it's like a period piece, so it, like it could just be, you know... In the same, not the same, because Shakespeare was like, what, the 1500s? And this is definitely the late 1800s. But Effie is uh, the eldest daughter of an earl, and her younger sister wants to go to London. Their mother ran off um, several years ago, and so Effie would have to be Viola's guardian, not guardian, it's the wrong word, chaperone. She would have to be her chaperone to like all the parties and things. And Effie hates London because the guy that Viola's really into, um, Huffington, I think is his name, who's just a right prick. He's the worst. I don't know why she's into him, but she is. <laughs> called uh, Effie just a terrible name. I think he called her like Lady, what did he call her? Not Lady Disgraceful. Like she came at him for something and the nickname he gives her is awful. I'm trying to find it, but I don't know if I'm going to find it. Lady Ghastly. That's what he called her, Lady Ghastly. And all because she kind of stood up for herself and women in general, and he did not like that. So in comes Gage, who is a very broke duke. He has inherited the dukedom because his brother died within the last year, and his brother owed debts to Huntington. Huntington says, hey, I will clear the debt your brother owes me if you can get... Effie to come to London with Viola because I would like to court Viola. I can only do that if her sister agrees to go to London. You need to not only get her to London, but get her to stay for six weeks and I will pay for everything. This is a deal he really can't pass up because he has sold all his furniture, paintings, things like that to keep the dukedom afloat to pay off some of his brother's other debts. And then Effie propositions him um, a little teach me moment, but plot twist, the Duke is also a virgin. Now he says, I have done everything but at this point. So he's not super naive, but they're exploring this together right now. And guys, it's so steamy. It's so steamy over like the smallest things. And I love it. I love it. I love their energy. I love how much they care about each other. This is meant to be like this temporary situation and yet they are having the best conversations. She just had this moment internally where she they're talking about how he's from Scotland and she asked him if he misses it. And he's like talking about it and she's like, man, I really want to go there. And in her head, she's like, I really want to go there with you. But I know this is supposed to be like a temporary thing. And I'm just like, mm, I know you're going to go there with him. I know you are. I just, I'm giggling and kicking my little feet. I'm having a very good time with this. So... I am 215 pages in, so I have like 150 pages left. I will probably finish this tonight, and then I'll pop back on and talk to you about it. But I'm having the best time. I'm having the best time. This might be my favorite of the series. It really might. Oh, she's being so affectionate. It might be my favorite book of the series. It's just so good. It's so good. Amelie Howard has this great way of building the relationships between the characters in this case, it's not, I would say, fitting of the times, number one, because Effie is just a very outspoken woman in the 1800s. And also, it's not, I shouldn't say it wasn't normal for women to be so sexually free. But I mean, it, it was not, it was frowned upon for sure. And there were women who were, but not without consequences. So I wouldn't say that this book in particular is, is historically accurate in that way. But in the other ones, I feel like she did a really good job of bringing the two together and having their relationship blossom in the most just innocent park strolls like you would see in Bridgerton, you know, the um, the, the man calling on her at the calling times and then they'd go for a drive or, or whatever, a carriage ride. Things that would make the mama so excited for potential matches. Uh, but she just does it in such a way that feels so genuine and you're rooting for it and I just love it I love it Amelie Howard girl you did your big one with this one I'm having such a good time such a good time I feel so cozy in this sweatshirt I just walked into my apartment I'm on my lunch break 
and I'm freezing. My phone says it's 63 degrees outside, but it does not feel like it. Maybe if I'm standing in the sun, but there's just so much shade cover right now that it's just, I'm cold. And it's because it was 96 two days ago. I finished The Worst Duke in London this morning. Ugh. I'm Willie Howard did it again, five stars from me. I had the best time. I loved how the third act was handled because this is a taming of the shrew slash nod to 10 things I hate about you. We all know what happens, you know? I love the way that she had us focusing on Effie through this and not in the ways that you would think. I love her friends. The chat she had with her friends after coming out of her like little depression hole of a room was fantastic. I also love the way Viola shows up for her in the latter half of this book, specifically after the conflict happened. And I love that Vale just didn't really make any excuses for his behavior. Um, he definitely tells her the why, but he's like, there's no excuse for me not telling you. Um, especially after I realized that this was no longer what it set out to be and that I did have feelings for you and that I love you. Oh, it was just so good. It was so good. It was so good. Also, seeing Huntington get his just desserts. Yeah, fantastic time. Fantastic time. So cannot recommend this enough. The audiobook is phenomenal. So if you're an audiobook listener, 10 out of 10 recommend doing that. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the last book of the vlog. We're ending on high note with a big, big win. So thank you so much for tuning in to this chaotic, almost two week long vlog, it felt like. I had mostly a good time. I wish I had shown you a little bit more, but you know what? Sometimes life is real monotonous and there's just nothing to show you. So happy reading. Have a great time. Comment down below what you're reading right now, what's surprising you, any audiobooks you're loving, and I will see you guys in another video soon.